hand icon. And if you guys know how to do that on Zoom, that's a great way to, um, to ask a question at any time. Also feel free to unmute and just, you know, interrupt or, you know, vocalize your question. Um, or you can use the chat and either Mickey or myself will see that. I'm, I'm pretty new to Zoom and so um, I'll do my best to moderate, but Mickey's gonna help uh, as well. Other interests, I love soccer. Um, I'm the high school soccer coach for Friday Harbor um, and I really enjoy that. Um, outdoor recreating, I, I put a picture up of my wife and I diving in Indonesia. And, uh, and of course, engineering and construction projects, kind of bridging the, the creative and the mathematical side of, of my brain. I, I really enjoy anything that involves that. Cool. So you guys are, are pretty familiar, I think, at this point with, with this course. Um, but to kind of put it into words, um, my, my hope for you guys and for, for us is that we will have a functional understanding of uh, the CAD workflow. Um, Shannon had mentioned uh, wanting to be able to take the thoughts and ideas in her mind and make them tangible and useful and functional. Um, and that's what the CAD workflow is. There's uh, several steps involved in taking an idea and, and making it um, physically happen. And so uh, that's something we're gonna go through at the end of today uh, in, in presentation form, but then we're gonna work and build off of that as we go through the course. Um, that along with um, competent skills in designing Infusion 360, uh, that just you know, pretty much means you're able to understand the majority of the, the functions within, within Fusion and, and of course use it to your advantage and, and, and make um, the designs that you're um, coming up with. Diving a little bit deeper, and I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time here. Um, I just mentioned uh, uh, the first one here, being able to navigate and use the majority of the tools in Fusion will be one of the outcomes. Uh, it was kind of funny. I was talking with a buddy of mine who's also a mechanical engineer, and uh, we were chatting about this course and, and using CAD, and, and, and the both of us uh, feel as though we're pretty competent in, in the, the softwares that we use. Um, but the reality of it is, is we use maybe 60% of the tools uh, within you know, any one of those softwares. And the other 40% is a matter of like Googling and understanding kind of how they work. Um, and the reality is these, these are just such massive programs and there are so many tools within them um, that you're gonna find that uh, you have kind of a small palette of tools that you're really good at, and then you're familiar with um, the majority of the others. So that's kind of what the working understanding of um, the various tools, that's what I mean in that, in that first line. Um, numbers two, three, and four, um, we're gonna hit on these in presentation form in, in, in the coming weeks. So um, I'm just gonna let you guys read through those really quick. And you don't have to understand necessarily what, what, what any of that means yet. Um, we'll, we'll cover that in, at a later time. Are there any questions kind of about this, the scope uh, of, of the course so far? I've had some people email me questions and I think I've answered you know, most of those, but at, you know, just looking at this, is there any questions about the scope? Yes. Um, I was just wondering how, like, when, like, so you sent us the stuff that the PDFs and stuff, are we going to work on those just during the class or are we going to do stuff between the class and then I have, ask, ask questions? Yeah, yeah. I have stuff um, set up both for in class work and out of class work. Um, CAD is definitely one of those skills that you're going to learn the fastest just by doing it and by doing it consistently. And so, um, yeah, I wanna give you ample opportunity both in class while you have me to bounce questions off of and then also out of class to practice. Does that help answer your question? Yeah? Yeah. Okay, totally. thanks. All right, anything else? Course schedule, again, um, the reason I really put this in the presentation is for your own reference. This, the, all the presentations will be accessible to you. Um, I'll, 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 
PDF them and send them to you via email. Um, but this will give you kind of a general understanding of, of the pace um, and what we're going to cover. There's a design competition in here later on, which will be pretty fun. I'm hoping that it's, um, I tried to, to make it uh, as encompassing as I possibly could given all of your interests. And so I, I think I did a good job of that and I, and I hope um, you, you will agree when we get started. Um, this is the first time this course has been done. And so we may crank right through it and I'll make more content towards the end. Um, or it may be that uh, we only get through the content of week three by the, by the end. And that's just fine. So um, don't take this as maybe set in stone, but rather, you know, there's some fluidity here. A little bit more on the structure of the course. Um, all the communication will be over Zoom um, or via email between you guys or, or between me and, and with you. Um, if you have questions on an assignment during the week, uh, you can always email me. Um, and my turnaround time, I'm, I'm putting up here 24 hours. I'm generally faster than, faster than that. Um, but the reality is there are 15 of you and, and one of me. So just depending on that workload, um, you can expect about you know, a day turnaround. That also means if, if, if you push out your work till the day before a class, for example, um, and then you email me that night, it may be that I can't respond until um, after the class the next day. So plan accordingly. Classwork packets will be sent to you via email at the start of a class. Um, so you should already have an email in your inbox for this, for today's work. Um, and then homework packets will be sent to you um, via email immediately after a class or during a class. Um, so that should be accessible um, to you really uh, right, right when you need it. 3D prints, um, we're gonna have, uh, I, I don't have it set in stone yet, but anywhere between let's say two and five prints per person by the end of the course. Um, and that's, uh, even though 3D, I'll be doing all the 3D printing. Um, when we sat down and kind of sketched out the course, uh, if having you guys do the 3D printing was a little bit outside of the scope. So we're focusing on CAD uh, and, and learning that, um, but through the lens of 3D printing as a manufacturing process. Um, and so with that in mind, you guys will have some prints to take home at the end of this. Um, I've made small groups as well. These are people that you're gonna collaborate with um, in a kind of a classroom setting during the breakout sessions when you're working uh, in class. Um, so there are people that you can ask questions to, um, work, work with, collaborate with. Uh, and of course, you guys can all ask me questions as well. There are also people that throughout the week, um, if you wanna bounce ideas off of, or, or maybe you're stuck on an assignment, there's someone that you can go to and, and maybe um, get a faster response than if you were to come, come to me as well. Um, so I'll, I'll flash those small groups up in a little bit when, once we get started. And then classes will consist of presentations. These topics range um, from things that I thought were really important to what we're gonna be learning, um, but also include uh, topics that you guys showed interest in in the survey that you took before the class. Um, then there's portions of self-guided tutorials slash design time for like the design competition. And I don't know if you guys have used the app Kahoot before, um, but it is, it's a really fun uh, uh, trivia app where um, we'll be able to kind of in a, in a fun, competitive, whatever type setting, review the work that we've done and kind of quiz ourselves uh, on the knowledge that we've learned. Any questions kind of about the course structure? Anything that I didn't cover that? I have a question. That you want answered? Yes, go ahead. Is, is it best to have uh, Fusion 360 on the same computer that you're doing Zoom? As in, will we be screen sharing what we're doing? We, we will be screen sharing what we're doing. Um, there's only a few instances of that though. Okay. Uh, and that'll be in a couple weeks. Cool. Yeah, good question. Thanks. Anything else? All right. Cool, we're nearly there. So can tell, can someone tell me we're, we're going to 
dive into it um, right now. Can someone tell me what CAD stands for? Looks like a few of you. Go, go ahead, Chelsea. Computer aided design. Yeah, you got it. Nice. So it's computer aided design. It's the use of computers to create, analyze, modify, and optimize any design. Again, that's very overarching. That umbrella, you know, has is, is far reaching. Um, I would say, in addition to this, it's also an incredible tool. It's the use of computers to share information. All right, like I was mentioning about making that satellite with literally hundreds of different organizations across the globe, CAD is used to effectively communicate design concepts um, uh, between one another. I've listed the industries here. It's definitely not an exhaustive list um, that CAD is used in. And the point I wanna make with this slide is, uh, that there are, are, are softwares specifically designed for various applications. All right, so, um, you know, and many of you, we, we, we all are here with a lot of different applications in mind. Um, so for example, Autodesk Revit, uh, that is specifically designed for um, architecture and construction. Um, and so it's going to have various tools and the workflow is going to look a little bit different than say Fusion 360, which there's a screenshot here to the right. And Fusion 360 is more geared for manufacturing and things like mechanical systems. Also under this umbrella, and this is getting into a world that I have um, little to no credibility, uh, and that is um, like computer graphics and like graphic design. And that's what this, this is a screenshot of Autodesk Maya. Um, I, I have, I would say no experience with things like Autodesk Maya. Um, but the other really neat thing about CAD is there are transferable skills between them. Oh, Steven, Steven's joining us. Steven, can you hear us? Can you hear me? Oh, he's connecting his audio. All right, at any rate. Um, so I was saying there are transferable skills between all of these. So we're gonna learn Fusion 360. That's what we're gonna focus on. If you're more interested in the construction and architecture side of things, you're gonna pick up Autodesk Revit faster because you've spent five weeks learning Autodesk Fusion. There are some similar functions how you sketch things and, and, and approach designing things in Fusion, it will be, I would say the, there will be some similarities um, between Revit and Fusion um, and even Maya, so on and so forth. So um, uh, that, that I think is pretty useful. Do we have any questions here? All right, let's see. Cool, so we're gonna get right into it with the lessons. Um, these are the groups here and, the, and they will remain uh, the same uh, for, for the duration of the course. Uh, and again, this is really only for, you know, pe people you can go to and ask questions as you're kind of working through, uh, through the lessons. Uh, a quick overview, let me exit out of this presentation. Um, so you should have seen an email from me recently. If you can still see. Okay. So you guys can still see my screen. Is that right? Yes. Okay, great. So you should see this. You're going to download the zip file. All right. You'll open it and then inside you're going to have three lessons to begin with. And in each lesson, lesson you'll have a folder with the fusion files uh, that you'll need and the PDF tutorials. And those are step by step um, uh, tutorials that are going to take you through various functions uh, within fusion. Um, so just to get started before we, we break out, I'll kind of show you what this should look like. 
or what I guess what I would do with my screen. Um, I'll, I would make half my screen Fusion 360. Okay. And then open up the first tutorial. This is, this is um, L1 for lesson one dash O1 for the first tutorial. And in this, you're just gonna follow, follow along with each step. Uh, and, and in this, for example, in this first tutorial, you're gonna be opening up a uh, reciprocating saw file and navigating that part within Fusion 360. Um, and then we'll, we'll kind of build off of that. Does anybody have any, any questions about how to get started? Once you're in the, once you're in the tutorial, um, it, it should be uh, pretty self, you know, driven. It, it should be pr pretty self-explanatory, uh, you know, what to do. And, and of course you can ask, ask me questions um, if you get stuck. We'll work for, I would say about a half an hour and then I'm gonna bring the group back together to hit on a few notes um, before we kind of break for the evening. Sound good? No questions? Cool, all right, go ahead and get started and I'll put you guys in your breakout rooms. First time in a breakout room. Hi everybody. <laughs> well, we're not quite there yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> This is my first time doing breakout rooms. All right. All right, so there's a few that are unassigned. Brett, this is Bill. Can you hear me? Hey, Bill, I can hear you. Yeah, I'm kind of lost as to where to go next. I've got this screen up. Um, how do I actually get over to the email, I guess, and then find your email in there? Sure. So are you in a web browser? Are you in your email? Uh, no, I'm not. I'm in the Zoom meeting. Oh, OK. Um, so I would open up a web browser and, and go to your email uh, I, as, I guess, as I guess you normally would on, okay. on, a, on a computer, okay. sure. All right, I think I can do that, all right. Can I stop the recording, Brett? Uh, sure, yeah, thank you. And I need to, I'm gonna assign the rest of these folks to breakout rooms. Mm -hmm. 